Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is uh, Radwan. I'm a microver student from uh, Algeria, located in the United States. Today, I'm hosting the webinar and we'll give a short background of microverse and then we'll introduce today's speaker. So, microverse is a coding school for remote developers and it's a completely a free program until you get a job. It has um, different um, curriculums and like um, data algorithms, Ruby on Rails, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, React, Redux. And it's a uh, full time from eight to five every day. And you have a coding partner and a mentor and and you will learn a lot of things. So every two weeks, we have a lunch and learn like this with uh, different speakers, like um, Ivan, who is with us today. And to the are open. Yeah. yeah. Can you hear me right? Yes. Yeah. And go ahead. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, uh, Radon, for the introduction. And hi, everyone. Um, it's Ivan here. I'm super happy to be to be here. Thank you, uh, Microverse, for having me, for hosting me today. Um, I have to admit I'm absolutely in love with uh, Microverse uh, project. Um, I think you guys are really making a difference, both uh, on the student side and on the company side. So I'm, I'm following closely the project, um, to be honest, and I wanted to be part of it somehow. So when I found out about this uh, lunch and learns, I I really wanted to do to be part of one, so that's why I'm here today. So thank you, thank you very much. Um, if at any point you don't hear me all right or anything, just let me know, and uh, I'm having a look at the, on the chat also, so just let me know. So my talk today is called My Path to Becoming a Product Engineer. I will tell you a little bit more of what does it mean uh, in a couple of minutes. So let's get it started. So yeah, about me, um, I'm Ivan Martinez. I'm from Madrid, uh, Spain, and I'm a software developer. Um, I've been, like, since I was a child, uh, I wanted to be an inventor, like somebody who created things that uh, never existed before. And soon I realized that the, one of the best ways to do so is by writing code. Right? So uh, and why is that? I think it is because the entry barrier to building new stuff is relatively small when you're a software developer. So you need a computer, you need a internet connection, probably. Not, it's not uh, something you need. I started coding without internet connection. And uh, you need like a lot of effort to put in, that's for sure. But if you have all these, then you can have like a huge impact. Like you can get your software and have an impact on hundreds and even millions of people. Uh, that's that's why I love it. I, I'm really excited about uh, software developer, software development. So my main field of expertise is Android, um, but I'm also into like very theoretical part of uh, software architecture, also robotics, uh, Internet of Things, machine learning, and lately I'm quite passionate about uh, virtual reality, which I won't be talking about this uh, time, but if you want to ping me after this talk to talk about virtual reality, I'm be, I'll be super happy to do. Okay, um, just to let you know, I studied in, in Madrid in the Universidad Politecnica, and I started telecommunications engineer from 2003 to 
So why do I want to tell you my path uh, to becoming a product engineer? Why, why, what is this product engineer idea after all? Well, I like this way of um, explaining it. So have you ever heard anybody say, I wish engineers spent less time understanding the problem and more time coding? Well, nobody has ever said that. And if anybody has, uh, was completely wrong. For sure, nobody related to the product part of the business has said that. Uh, on the contrary, more people are asking us, the engineers, the software developers, to really understand the problem before we start to code. And this is essential. And um, this product engineer concept, uh, which is kind of new for me, uh, really represents this idea. I will tell you like um, the main six um, skills behind a good product engineer so I can explain the concept a little further. So a good product engineer is for sure an engineer. Like I'm talking about software developers here. Um, but apart from being a good software engineer, apart from being able to code, uh, it is, uh, he should be, or he or she should be proactive, proactive with uh, product ideas and opinions, uh, with a huge, really deep understanding of the business, like uh, truly interest on the, in the business and the user behavior and being able to check data. Also, a good product engineer is a really good communicator, like a strong communicator, not only uh, be able to communicate with other software developers, with other engineers, but especially with non-engineers. Also, a really good uh, product engineer is somebody pragmatic. Sometimes when we learn how to code, we want to apply the best practices and all the different software patterns we know to every single project. So this is not a way. It is the opposite from being pragmatic. You have to handle those edge cases you always find in a project, but do it in a pragmatic way. Only take those that are real world use cases. Also, it is very important to own the product, not only the code part of the product. Um, and this is super helpful for all the companies. So. If you are a software developer, but you really own the feature itself from the very beginning to the end, uh, you will be adding a lot more of value than if you only you are only coding it. And at the end, if you do all of this, you will uh, start creating uh, your product instinct. Um, so based on the, uh, learning, iterating features, you will get a product instinct and you will be the one proposing new initiatives, proposing new features uh to your company to your product manager and this is super super valuable so i see more and more companies asking for product engineers now uh and not for code monkeys which would be like the opposite from a product engineer uh, that's why i encourage you to of course uh, learn how to code but after that uh like always pay attention to the business part of it to the product part of it so, okay, um, the idea behind this presentation is to tell you a little bit about my own experience and uh, trying to highlight the key learnings I got from different uh, experiences I've had along the way. So I've been lucky to work in the, a lot of different places already, uh, very different kind of companies. Um, nowadays, I'm working at a startup, but uh, this is my first startup. Um, so I've worked in very different places. And that's uh, why I've got uh, many very different learnings. And I try to share with you. So I guess, or I hope uh, some of those will be useful for you in the near future. So for me, it all started like when I was 12 years old. Uh, I started uh, as a crappy uh, indie game developer. And uh, yeah, and my story today is I'm at OnTrack, which is a startup, and uh, my role is product engineer. 
So I will be sharing different, uh, the different companies in uh, chronological order I've been working on as a software developer. And I will try to highlight the key learnings. In the left side of the slides, you will find uh, these three circles um, trying to uh, show how much did I learn in this kind of company about product and business, about technology, and how much joy did I have during that time. And you will see uh, quite interesting differences uh, between one type of company and another. So at first, when I was like uh, around 12 years old, I started implementing my own games. It was just for fun. It was not something professional. I did it for me and my friends. Um, uh, so there was no company behind me. It was just me. I used a technology that I'm sure you have never heard about, which is uh, Div Game Studio. It was a Spanish studio, um, like an IDE for creating a, a whole system for creating games. It was amazing. And um, so I had a lot of fun. I learned very little about product because I was working for myself. I was asking nobody how to do the things uh, right. And I learned really little about how to really do proper software development. I was just coding uh, without having a clue of what I was doing. But I was having great fun. And so the key learning here is just try to have fun because uh, learning how to code requires a lot of effort. Don't forget to have fun. So you can have fun even without having a clue of what you're doing. I was just messing around with projects, changing lines here and there, and seeing the results. And that worked great. Um, and remember, not every code has to be perfect. So play around at home, uh, break projects, uh, write crappy code. That's OK. It all, uh, you will learn from all of it. And remember to have fun again. So after that, I started like uh, at the university. And when I was fin finishing the university, I wanted to check the real world. So I started working at Vodafone. I guess you know it. It is a huge telco. Um, and yeah, I was an intern, a customer support intern in this case. Um, technology? Well, not really. Like I was using, I was supposed to be using Microsoft Excel uh, to solve some really uh, manual and repetitive work using uh, some Excel sheets. Um, so I learned, I was learning little, very little about product, and I was not enjoying it much. But after some weeks there, I found that I could automate a big part of the manual work I was doing. So I started playing around with uh, Excel macros using Visual Basic uh, as a language. So I was writing scripts to automate things as much as I could. I did it out of my working hours and presented it, presented it back to my boss. He loved it. Uh, so I dramatically changed my role. And I stopped doing manual work. And I started automating everything, like every other Excel sheet, every other piece of manual work my colleagues were doing. I started automating stuff. Um, so I turned a really boring job into a kind of average uh, job. It was not super fun, because writing macros is not really a funny thing to do. But uh, definitely, I was at least learning something. So my key learnings here would be be patient with your first uh, experiences, professional software development experiences. First steps are not easy, so be patient. But always try to find a way to make things interesting, like propose new things, explore new things, present to your boss. Uh, there is always an alternative. Uh, there, is, there are always ways to, to learn while working. And of course, never forget uh, that everybody loves automation. Nobody likes doing repetitive manual work. And if there is something we software developers do right, is automating stuff. We don't like manual work at all. 
Okay, after that came my first real software developer uh, role, position. I was still an intern at the university. Uh, it was a research uh, department um, and I was playing around with Java mainly, uh, both in the front end and the back end, and also Android. Um, I didn't learn a lot about product because we were basically doing proof of concepts for different companies. Uh, we were trying out a lot of new technologies. For example, we were experimenting with uh, recommendation systems, which was not that common back then. So I learned a lot about technology and it was very fun because I was still in the university. I was working with my, with my friends. Uh, so yeah, I did have a great time. My key learning from that time, get your hands dirty in real time, pro in real life projects as soon as possible. Before I said play at home, this is super good to learn, but also you will find uh, that real professional projects are not anything like the time you're having at your house, at your home, uh, playing around with tech. This is a whole different thing. So try to do it as soon as possible. Second thing, if you ever get to the opportunity to work in a research department, just try it out because it is a really safe place to try out new technology, to fail, to learn. Uh, it is really, really cool. And there are not that many positions out there uh, in research departments. And of course, working with other students is super fun. Like it was, every day was a party. Then I moved on to a really different kind of company. Um, it was a small e-learning company. Uh, I did move because the guy from the university I was learning a lot from moved to this place, to this company. So I basically followed him. I was learning so much from him, I could not afford to uh, lose him. So I basically uh, followed him to this company. And I don't regret that uh, decision. It was a super good decision. Um, at that company, we were working with technology that I pretty sure you don't know, which is Flex and ActionScript. The output were Flash-based web applications. Um, maybe this was like, uh, I don't know, like uh, eight years uh, from now in the past. Um, so Flash was still a thing. Now Flash is absolutely deprecated. Uh, no major browser supports it anymore uh, in favor of HTML5, which is a real thing, a really good thing. Uh, so my role there was also kind of research, but also into the product uh, part of the business. I learned quite a lot from product because we were a small team and we had to work out not only technical decisions, but also product uh, decisions. We were building e -learning, uh, an e-learning course engine that at the end our own company used to create e-learning courses and sell it to major companies out there. Um, I, even if this uh, Flex and ActionScript technology were not like top level technologies. I still learned a lot about technology because I was close to this senior guy uh, I was following and he is one of the best software developers I've ever known. And well, it was fun. Uh, not the best experience I have had because those two technologies are not really enjoyable to work with, but yeah, it was not bad. So key learnings here, be close to seniors. If you find a really good developer that is teaching you a lot, just follow follow that uh, man or that woman. Be careful with technology and never become obsolete. Um, I know some some people that are still working with those technologies. It's going to be super hard for them to find their next job. So uh, becoming obsolete is one of the worst mistakes we can take as software developers. And also side projects are great. So try to have side projects. If you don't have kids, then you may have the time. If you do have kids, then you probably won't sleep at night if you want to have a serious side project. But it pays off 
why do I say this? Because during my time here as Flex and ActionScript were not really exciting technologies. I doubled down in Android development uh, and I started creating my own apps. Uh, one of those was a game, uh, kind of a virtual pet uh, that really worked. Uh, I mean, I got more than half a million downloads from the, from the Android uh, store. Um, a good percentage of those were paid downloads. So I changed, I switched, uh, I basically left this company and I started my own, my own company. So I started my own indie studio. Uh, that game was working super good. It was basically paying for my bills, which is quite a lot to say for an indie developer. Um, so I decided to go full time with this. I spent like a year and a half uh, in this experience. Uh, we called it Seattle, uh, which uh, was uh, Zombies in the Lab was the name of this company. Uh, I say we because I created this with one of my best friends. He was not working full time, so I was uh, the main resource of the company. Um, during that, that time, I learned about product, but not that much. And I realized that um, after some time, I thought I knew more than I really knew back then. Uh, so same with tech. I was not learning that much about tech because running your own company implies um, doing a lot of things different from uh, software development. But, oh God, that was really enjoyable. That was really fun. Like being able to work for yourself, being able to pay your bills with uh, apps you've built, this is an amazing feeling. Um, so key learning here, if you're ever thinking of running a company, it is very tough. It is not an easy thing to do. And it is not only about software development. Um, you have to admit that you basically know nothing. So you better get advice from people that have done that before and failed, as you were probably going to fail. So your failure seems less painful, I would say. You can also succeed. <laughs> Don't take me wrong. And, uh, but yeah, like, you learn a lot by publishing your own stuff, like your own apps. You start getting feedback from real users. This is super valuable. So yeah, just do it. I'm not saying go and create your own studio, but go and create your, app, your own apps. It takes like, it is like uh, $25 for being an official uh, software developer uh, in Google Play. Uh, it is a uh, one payment, one, uh, one off. Uh, for App Store, it takes a little more. It is like 100 uh, dollars each year. But yeah, it is not that expensive and, and you get a lot of value um, back. So after this, I moved to BQ. It is a hardware company, something super different. I was working on Android. I was tech lead. I was creating the companion apps for, for some hardware projects. Uh, for this, for example, this uh, cute little robot you can see there. And you can actually see here. Uh, me. So yeah, it was a really, really, really fun project. Like hardware related. If you are into hardware, also Arduino and so, oh, that was amazing. Um, so key learnings from that moment: get out of your tech comfort zone. So during my two and a half years at BQ, uh, BQ, I I was uh, in charge of Android, but I learned a lot about uh, backend with Node, with uh, microservices um a lot of different stuff and um it was a, so highly technical projects that i was uh getting a lot more of insights and deep knowledge about the theoretical part of uh, software development about the foundations that's why i'm um, uh my key learnings here would be get out of your tech comfort zone if you ever find a high tech project like jump into it. It is not common to uh, find a project which is high tech, which uh, is investing a lot in tech. So, but it is a great opportunity. So try try to enroll in one, of, in one of these. And a really strong point, like I know learning solid coding foundations is hard 
It takes a lot of time. You have to study, you have to check, you have to try, you have to read. But believe me, this pays off like a lot. Like uh, my experience during BQ, uh, I'm using it all the time, every single day. I can nowadays discuss with any colleague uh, from the back end side, from the front end side, uh, anybody from uh, DevOps even, because I really have a strong foundation of uh, software development. So it is not about frameworks, it is not, it is not about languages. It is about knowing how this uh, software development really works. Then I did my great mistake in uh, during my career. You can see when I enrolled this consultancy company, I learned nothing about product, nothing about tech, and I had no fun at all. Why did I do it? Because of money. Be careful with your decisions. Money is good, don't take me wrong, but um, always check double check on the project double check on the quality their portion um i'm not saying every consultancy company is crap i'm just saying i really had a bad experience here so i left within uh, in less than six months but i really like i think this was my big mistake i did it because they offered me a big amount of money um but money is not all so take it into account um run away from low quality software factories and very important if a project is not working for you just change uh we have a great advantage here and it is that uh software developers are needed all around the globe for mainly every single project so we have opportunities to change uh to switch projects just do it uh don't stick with one you're not enjoying and my last uh, piece of experience is uh, on track. Um, I'm working at on track at the moment. I've been there for here for three years now. It is a startup. It is my first startup, I have to say. Um, I'm learning a lot about product. Uh, I guess because I'm surrounded by the best product managers in Spain for sure, and one of the, of the best globally. Um, I'm also learning about tech, not as much as when I was in, in Beku because it was a highly technical project. This one is a product project, so tech is a tool. Uh, it is not like the final goal. But I'm having a lot of fun. This is, this is amazing because we are having a lot of impact in the industry. We are working with, um, with the transport industry, and it is being uh, an amazing time. Um, my, I started working uh, uh, with Android, but I also do Python. Uh, my role is product engineer. And as I said, probably not every startup is a great place to work at. Uh, I've been lucky. This one is amazing. Uh, some of my colleagues have worked in several startups before, and they told me this is probably the best one they've ever worked at. Uh, yeah, I guess this is a matter of luck. And also, yeah maybe knowing how to choose uh, projects. Key learning is here. Uh, if you're enrolled in a product company, as a startup is, pro is mostly a product company, maybe you won't be learning a lot about tech, but for sure you will be learning a lot about non-technical skills, which are equally important. Everything I told you about a product engineer, uh, this is a great place to learn. In product companies, Tech is just a tool to solve problems. But this is what it is, actually. You're learning how to code, but you're learning how to code not just for coding, but for solving problems. This is an essential thing to take into account. And then uh, working in a startup means having a lot of direct impact to business and to people outside the company. And this is very inspiring, at least for me. So, the number one lesson, if you take anything with you today, I would say never stop learning, but never stop enjoying. Uh, learning how to code, learning software development is not easy. It requires a lot of hard work, a lot of hours in front of the computer. You will sometimes want to throw your computer away. Uh, on the other side, you will sometimes feel like a real hacker. Enjoy those uh but as it is that hard 
uh, you should never stop enjoying. If you find yourself in a project where you're not learning or you're not enjoying, then change projects. This would be my advice. And that's all on my side. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I hope, uh, yeah, this was uh, interesting for you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ivan. Your uh, career path is very, very inspiring. So we have collected some questions in here. The first one is from Julio. And He's asking, how can you get your hands dirty in real professional projects? Mm -hmm. I would say a great way of doing so is by finding uh, an open source project you, um, you're interested in. So even before uh, getting into a, a company and working on uh, like professional code within a company, uh, bear in mind that open source projects are also real world experiences. Uh, so you have to follow some rules. You have to work with uh, pull requests or merge, merge requests. Uh, you have to discuss with colleagues. So yeah, I would say this is an easy way to start. Thank you. We have another questions from Zina. She's asking, what are the projects that you feel proud of? Um, I really feel proud of uh, this uh, little guy here. Uh, this is an educational robot for kids uh, based on Arduino. It is open source from the hardware to the software. Uh, and I'm quite proud of it. Um, from a selling perspective, it didn't sell quite well. So I don't know how proud is the company <laughs> with it. But from a technical perspective, it, it, it is an amazing piece of work, both uh, hardware and software. Also, the team that created it, uh, we were all super like quite young, uh, everybody between 20 and 30 years. Uh, and I think we did a really, a really good job. All right. I have another question from uh, Burhan. It says, as I have seen, you must have spent learning, uh, spent on learning technology tools. Would you describe yourself as a general developer or as an expert on a specific tool paradigm technology? And what about your learning curve? Is it changed after years? as you are getting older. <laughs> so yeah, as I said before, like my main field of expertise is Android, but I've always liked um, playing around with several technologies and I encourage you to do so. Like uh, nowadays, for example, at, at uh, on track, when we are hiring, we are asking uh, for engineers that are versatile. So there's no, like there's no point on super, um, like specific knowledge on a technology or a framework if you're not able to then uh, unlock the situation when somebody from the back end or from the front end side needs some help, at least in product companies. If you're in a, uh, at a research company very focused on a the technology, then it, this is a different story. But most of the cases, it is be better if you are a versatile developer than super experienced in one technology. That's why even while my main field of expertise is Android, I've always tried to be up to date with uh, front end technologies and also with the back end. Uh, I've played around mostly with Python and, and PHP. And I won't tell you try to catch up with every single technology, but at least the main frameworks in the back end and in the front end, you should have a loop from time to time. All right. So we have another question from Adam. And do you have any book recommendation? when it comes to learning principles of software engineering? I do love Clean Architecture uh, book. Um, it is mostly for object-oriented programming, but I think it is a, it presents uh, solid foundations. And talking about solid, uh, again, it is uh, mostly about uh, object-oriented. Object um, but if you read the solid principles and you like learn them by heart, by testing, by, by uh, trying them out in the real world, then it is also super useful. And uh, it will help you in most of the discussions with other developers. OK. I have another question from Zina. On which technologies should we focus on before applying to a job? Um, I can speak like, for example, when we are hiring uh, nowadays at OnTrack, we are asking for Python developers, but we are also 
hiring any developer that has a solid foundations. You know, even we are hiring non Python developers for a Python role. And I think this is super good because if you're a good software developer, then that's all good. Python is just a language you will have to learn. Nothing special. So, but yeah, I would say Python is quite versatile. Uh, don't look at Java at the moment. Nobody's really like using it. Uh, well, really, uh, people are using it, but I would switch to Kotlin in the case you want to work with uh, the Java virtual uh, machine. And then React in the front end is, uh, is quite good. Also, Ruby uh, on the on the back end is quite good to learn. All right. There's a question from Nikolaus. What is some of the most demanding skills you have to master before becoming a product engineer? Huh. Um, clear answer here. Developing uh, a real um, interest for the business and product. Because we come from a very technical uh, training when we learn how to code. So like spending some time trying to understand the business people and the product people who sometimes don't really speak our language. And I'm not talking about English or Spanish. I'm talking about, you know, um, this takes time. Um, but it pays off, I would say. Mm -hmm. So and there is another question by Alejandro. He says, can you speak more about money and salary in the tech world? Well, this is a really like open question. It depends. On the, it depends on the CD, it depends on the kind of role. Um, what I would say is that um, if you if you are good at it, you will get a really nice salary. Um, we are hiring people from all around the world. At Antrac, we are still not uh, full remote friendly. We are working on it, but anyway, we brought people from Russia. We work. We brought people from Moldova. Uh, from everywhere around Europe and even uh, the US and, uh, and, and South America. Uh, and, and our salary is quite good. So, yeah. yeah. All right. So, another question from James. As a product engineer, what are your great. Say again. Um, what are what are your greatest challenges as a product engineer? Yeah. So again, I would say business understanding, deep, real business understanding. Uh, develop your own your own interest, and um, and also communication is usually a difficult skill to develop among among software developers and engineers. I see a lot of people struggling to communicate to other business people or to present an idea in front of a big audience. Thank you. So another question. Do you work mostly in office or remotely? I do partial remote. Like I work two days from home, three days from the office. Mm -hmm. Another question from James. What must one study computer science while in college before he or she can become a professional developer or engineer? I think not. I think not. Even at uh, on track, we are hiring people. Not everybody. Like I'm talking a lot about engineers, but not from a degree point of view. I'm talking about engineers as a way of um, working. Um, so I would say nowadays it doesn't matter. Uh, the way you learn how uh, software development. Um, but it is really important to get strong foundations and expertise as soon as possible. So a degree, well, you learn some things uh, when you are in a degree. But uh, I don't think it is like compulsory. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So another question, what kind of project you were working on in the university with Java? Yeah, it was mainly Java at the university, and um, projects were super simple. Uh, yeah, and again, related to the previous question, my main uh, software development foundations were not, I didn't get them during my university time. So I am, I am not proud of the Java projects I worked on during the university. 
all right so we have another question here you know do you know oracle database i've worked mostly with sql yes uh nowadays i'm trying to understand uh non-relational databases like for example firebase uh data store uh because it enables some different use cases for example i think it is more suited for uh, real-time um, use cases uh, so i'm i'm trying to but be careful if you come from a relational to a non-relational database because we usually get uh, the short path and these are really different things uh, so really different ideas to apply you have to study a little bit before going into it mm -hmm. okay so there's another question. What, what is your opinion about pair programming? Uh, I love it. Like, do it as much as you can. And if you find somebody who can who challenge your code, then even better. OK. Um, what is your opinion of CMS like WordPress? Is it worthy to involve in their base code and specialized in that field, or could be obsolete well wordpress has proved that they are not getting obsolete and they have sometimes now um, but uh, like i've worked a lot with uh, cmss like uh, wordpress but uh, i would say it is okay to to master it because it enables you to work in uh, several projects but try not to work only on this. I don't see this as a full technology you can be leveraging in a different project. For example, if somebody came to me and told me that they are super expert in the WordPress, CMS, PHP part, I wouldn't hire, hire that guy or girl today for on track without any other expertise. All right. So another question. Do you apply networking? If so, how do you apply it? I don't know if I understand the question networking from a social point of view or a technical point of view i think it's from a social point of view so then yes like um like this lunch and learns and every other uh community you can be involved into uh attend to every event you can this you get a lot of of new knowledge and then uh, networking like you get to know a lot of interesting people this is uh, something you should really do all right another question from andre after your experience what are the perspectives in depth for people who have social science as background um i've seen a lot of people move from different backgrounds to software development and when that happens usually uh, people bring with them a different point of view that is very interesting to be applied to the software development itself. But not only software development, if you take into account this other idea I told you about, this product engineer uh, way of looking at things, then it is super useful. Imagine what a, a social science uh, a person can do about these six skills I highlighted at the very beginning of a product engineer. You're probably already exceeding at one of those, or two or three, so the only part to uh, now uh, nail is the software development part but you will you will get advantages thank you ivan all right so that's all we have for today thank you very much ivan and um do you have any advice to our student our last advice um so my advice would be like get ready to work hard this is not easy um so work hard but also enjoy like enjoy every day uh, have fun at it find your way to really have fun even when you're working at a company and maybe it is your first job and it is not that interesting then run a side project uh, on yourself uh, publish your own applications like have fun this is a really fun thing to do uh, there are a lot of opportunities you can develop games you can develop uh, different kind of programs, applications. Um, so yeah, work hard and have fun. That would be my, my main advice. 
Thank you very much, Ivan. This is very inspiring. And um, thank you, everyone, for uh, attending. And we hope that you will join us in the future Lunch and Learns. Sure thank thing. You and have a good day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.